Hey, welcome back to the channel everyone. Hope you're doing well. In today's video, I wanted to discuss quickly uh, some of the pitfalls and some of the things that you should be aware of when you're kind of starting off as a new iOS developer. So I kind of got this question during one of my mentoring sessions with a student, as well as a lot of this uh, type of question coming up during the live streams. So I bet a lot of you guys are quite curious as to some of the things that you have to watch out for. And so I've taught iOS development and Swift programming for quite a while now, and I've been able to sort of observe some of the bad habits that beginners tend to have in the early stages of programming. So I wanna discuss with you guys uh, a quick list of three things that you should avoid when you're starting off with Swift programming. Okay, so the first thing I kind of want to talk about is setting the correct expectations as a novice programmer. Now, if you're learning iOS development and you don't know much about programming, my suggestion is to first start off with learning about variable types, uh, for loops, classes and structs, and then how to write functions inside of the Swift programming language. Now, the expectations that you have to set for yourself in the very beginning is not to be able to build out something as sophisticated as Instagram, but instead you just wanna start off with the basics. And remember, uh, everyone needs to start off with walking before they can run. So make sure you don't try to go too fast in the beginning and make sure you understand and have a good foundation of everything that you need for long-term success. When I'm teaching Swift programming, most of the time when I do it, I go through a lot of easy and simple algorithm exercises. And the reason why I do this is because it kind of allows students to get familiar and comfortable with typing out Swift inside of the Xcode editor. And it really allows me to kind of ease them into the entire environment. And this is kind of one of the reasons why I avoid Interface Builder as well. Trying to explain everything that goes on behind the editor of Interface Builder is super complicated and it really confuses students, especially in the beginning. Have you ever tried to build out an application that was completely out of your league? Well, I know I've been guilty of doing this myself. And so this phrase, biting off more than you can chew, it refers to someone that mistakenly decides to agree to take on a task that they're not totally capable of completing. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with this as long as you're able to admit to yourself that the problem set is too difficult to solve right now. Uh, successful programmers in the world of software development, uh, the reason why they are able to achieve high success is because they're able to identify problems as being quite difficult and the ability to break them down into smaller pieces that they can handle one piece at a time. And that's the way that you can establish a good track record in building good software. So something else that professional programmers do really well is that they typically over budget the amount of time that they need to develop a feature and the amount of time that they need to complete something during a sprint. Remember, it's always better to under promise and then over deliver rather than promising way too much and then showing up with very, very little. Here's another question that I have for you and you have to be totally honest. Have you ever tried to search for an answer on Google and upon arriving to the Stack Overflow post, all you did was you copied and pasted the entire solution into your Xcode editor and sometimes you don't even read the question or the comments, right? Uh, I know I've done this myself. Uh, most of you guys have done it as well. So this problem here is probably one of the worst offenders of programming behavior. And the issue is that when you're starting off as a beginner, a novice in programming, you're not really doing yourself a favor when you're skipping all of the useful gems inside of a Stack Overflow post. If you're really trying to improve yourself as a beginning programmer, you should really do yourself the favor of slowly reading through the comments, the questions, and also each line of code that you're copying and pasting. Having been an instructor for so long, if I had a dollar for every time I was able to resolve someone's Xcode issue by just telling them to read the lines of code they're copying, uh, I'd have a lot more money to kind of blow on 4K monitors like that one back there. So to summarize everything we talked about today, you wanna make sure you set the correct expectations 
for yourself based on your own learning pace. And then secondly, you want to make sure what you're trying to learn, what you're trying to build isn't too hard, especially in the beginning, because tasks can become especially daunting and overwhelming if you're trying to do too much at the same time. And then finally, Google is a really, really good platform for getting answers and solutions to your problems, but you want to make sure that you exercise patience in using the solutions and reading through each line that you're copying. All right, so hopefully you found this video helpful. Make sure to give it a like and also subscribe to the channel if you want more useful tips like this. Keep on learning and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye guys.